prosecute Lionel Tate in the state of Florida in the juvenile court system meant that Lionel was facing six to nine months in juvenile detention. That's one month for every year of this little girl's life. And in my estimation, that was not an appropriate sentence. And that was not justice for this little girl. Two children left alone to play, and a six-year-old girl ends up dead. Tiffany died of multiple blunt traumatic injuries. Was this a case of child's play gone wrong? He was play fighting with her and didn't understand that it could lead to her death. Or something more sinister. Lionel beat her over the course of five minutes with fists and stomping and kicking and punching. The only person who knew for sure was a 12-year-old boy. In August 1999, 12-year-old Lionel Tate became one of the youngest Americans ever charged with first-degree murder. The victim? Six-year-old Tiffany Eunuch. Tate claimed he had injured the girl accidentally while roughhousing, but an autopsy report indicated she had been savagely beaten. The drama that unfolded would include a young boy's journey through the adult criminal courts, a mother's risky attempt to protect her son, and a defense strategy that put professional wrestling in the spotlight. But on July 29th, the day after the death, a medical examiner performed an autopsy on Tiffany Eunuch. What she found stunned police. The 48-pound first grader had sustained more than 35 injuries, including brain hemorrhages, a cracked skull, a fractured rib, and lacerated liver. According to the medical examiner, the injuries were so severe that they could only have been inflicted intentionally. Tiffany's death was ruled a homicide. The case was now a murder investigation. By this point, detectives were convinced that Lionel had deliberately beaten Tiffany and then concealed the truth to avoid getting in trouble. It took time for Tiffany to get beaten and subsequently die. He would have known at that time that this child was suffering. That same evening, armed with the coroner's ruling that Tiffany's death was a homicide, police arrested Lionel Tate for the murder of Tiffany Eunuch. After reviewing the case, Assistant State's Attorney Ken Padowitz decided that Tiffany's beating was brutal enough to warrant prosecution in the adult criminal court system. On August 11th, a grand jury convened in downtown Fort Lauderdale to determine what charges, if any, to bring against Lionel Tate. Within hours, Ken Padowitz walked out of court to make a startling announcement. Brow County Grand Jury has met in the investigation of the death of Tiffany Eunuch and has voted to indict the defendant Lionel Tate for first degree murder. While many observers were stunned by the grand jury's decision, Pedowitz says they had simply responded to the evidence he presented. They had an opportunity to indict him for something lesser, such as a second degree murder charge, but they came back with an indictment for first degree murder. As both sides prepared for trial, many people wondered if Lionel Tate's actions, in fact, constituted murder. And if so, what in his brief life could have led him to commit this awful crime? To defend his client, Lewis devised a controversial explanation for the boy's actions, that Lionel had accidentally killed Tiffany while imitating the staged violence of professional wrestling. As pre-trial hearings got underway in the spring of 2000, Lewis began appearing on television to make his case to the public. We believe that this was a very unfortunate accident, that this child was simply mimicking what he saw on television. And uh, I think it's important that the jurors in this case have understanding about what professional wrestling is, how children watch it. Media across the country, already closely following the case, ran with the story. Headlines proclaimed it the, quote, wrestling defense. The so-called wrestling defense brought the case even more notoriety. But prosecutors were quick to respond that Lewis's strategy was simply a smokescreen. What we're afraid of is that defense attorney in this case wants to put on trial television and professional wrestling rather than the fact that this 12-year-old 
is indicted for first degree murder and he should be tried for that murder. It was a sham. All this talk about professional wrestling all became just one big bowl of nonsense. To prosecutor Ken Padowitz, the physical evidence clearly showed that Tiffany's death could not have been a wrestling accident. This little girl suffered over 35 injuries to her body. We're talking about a very, very serious beating that took course over a minimum of five minutes. I think people were hoping it was going to work out and that something that he would be punished if he was guilty, but that he would not, his life would not be ruined forever. In February 2000, with the backing of Deweese Eunuch, prosecutors approached Lionel Tate's attorney with a deal. We decided to offer a plea bargain to have some resolution for Tiffany's mom, Deweese, have some justice for little Tiffany, but also have some type of punishment and some hope of rehabilitation for Lionel Tate. The terms of the deal would require Lionel to plead guilty to second degree murder in exchange for a lighter sentence that included three years in a juvenile facility. In a move that shocked many, she rejected the plea bargain, insisting that her son was completely innocent. Over the next several months, Ken Padowitz offered the same deal several times, right up until the trial. Lionel Tate rejected this plea offer time and time again until it was time to give Lionel Tate what he wanted and had a right to as a person charged with murder in our country. And we had a trial. The trial is next. On January 16th, 2001, at the Broward County Courthouse in Fort Lauderdale, the murder trial of 13-year-old Lionel Tate got underway. Media from around the world were on hand to watch the proceedings. Prosecutor Ken Padowitz opened no, for the state. Yeah. He began by describing for the jury how Lionel Tate, who weighed 170 pounds, savagely assaulted the 48-pound Tiffany eunuch. Lionel Tate beat her over the course of five minutes with fists and stomping and kicking and punching, where he admitted he punched her 35 to 40 times while Kathleen Grasset Tate was allegedly upstairs with the door closed, sleeping. Defense made its opening statement. Attorney Jim Lewis presented the same argument he had pushed in the press. Tiffany's death was the unintended result of Lionel imitating wrestling moves he had seen on TV. In a move that set the emotional tone for the trial, the prosecution called as its first witness Tiffany's mother, Deweese Eunuch. Eunuch began by talking about the happy life she shared with Tiffany up until her daughter's death. It was Deweese and her daughter against the world. She was a single mom who was raising her daughter on her own, and she had a very, very tight bond um, with Tiffany. The day after Tiffany's murder, and Lionel turned to Deweese and said that he would like to have Tiffany's toys and he would like to live with Deweese since Tiffany was not going to be coming home anymore. Fedowitz believed this may have been one of Lionel's reasons for killing Tiffany. The next day, the state presented one of its most anticipated pieces of evidence, the videotape in which Lionel reenacted the events surrounding Tiffany's death. The video had actually been made by the defense to show that Lionel had accidentally hurt Tiffany. But the prosecution would now use it to bolster its own case and to preempt the so-called wrestling defense. But according to the prosecution, the actions Lionel demonstrated in the video could in no way account for the severe trauma the girl had suffered. To drive this point home for the jury, the state showed a computer graphics display detailing Tiffany's injuries. The forces that would be used to inflict these injuries were equal to falling out of a second or third floor building. So these were tremendous injuries. This was not an accident. This was a homicide. 
The prosecution went on to argue that in his initial statements to authorities, Lionel hadn't even mentioned many of the details he described in the video, including anything about professional wrestling. As proof, the state called to the stand Michael Brannon, a court-appointed psychologist, and by coincidence, a former pro wrestler himself, who interviewed Lionel three times following his arrest. There was no throwing her into a pole. There was no accidentally stepping on her. It was a very simple story about two kids playing, one kid falling, and another kid tripping over her. On Thursday, January 18th, after three days of testimony, the prosecution rested. The following Monday, defense attorney Jim Lewis began presenting his version of events. Lewis called to the stand forensic pathologist Dr. John Maraccini. Maraccini testified that the wrestling moves Tate claimed to be imitating could have caused the injuries described in Tiffany's autopsy. However, on cross-examination, Maraccini admitted that the injuries were too severe to have been inflicted accidentally. That was very, very damaging because there you had a defense expert basically saying, yes, it wasn't an accident. Um, it could not have been an accident. So that was very, I think that really hurt the defense. On January 23rd, the defense called its final witness, Lionel Tate's mother, Kathleen Grosset Tate. Grosset Tate went on to say that she had no idea Lionel had been involved in Tiffany's death. Under cross-examination, however, the prosecution challenged Grosset Tate's story, arguing that she was fully aware her son had done something wrong. Bedowitz pointed out that paramedics had seen Grosset Tate turn over a blood-stained pillow in what the state maintained was an attempt to clean up the crime scene. Petowitz also questioned Grosset Tate about the sounds Tiffany had made earlier that evening. The state argued that they were actually the girls' cries for help and that Grosset Tate ignored them. On January 25, 2001, the trial of Lionel Tate drew to a close. The fate of the 13-year-old boy was now in the hands of a jury. The verdict and the dramatic aftermath are next. After three hours of deliberation, the jury returned with its verdict. We, the jury, find the defendant is guilty of murder in the first degree as charged in the indictment. Seven weeks later, on March 9th, Lionel Tate returned to court for sentencing. In Florida, a first degree murder conviction carries a mandatory life sentence. Incarceration via natural life. Prosecutor Ken Padowitz also felt the sentence was too harsh. I realized that Tiffany Eunuch had justice, but I made no uh, secret by the fact that I found life in prison with no parole inappropriate as a sentence. In September 2003, the case made its way to a federal appeals court in West Palm Beach. Three months later, the court handed down its ruling. Lionel Tate's competency, it said, had not been evaluated prior to his trial. Therefore, he should be granted a new trial. To avoid yet another emotional trial, prosecutor Ken Padowitz again offered a plea bargain to Lionel Tate. The deal called for Tate to plead guilty to second degree murder in exchange for the three years in prison he had already served, one year of house arrest, and 10 years probation. It was the same exact plea offer that I had engineered three years earlier. Lionel Tate had a second bite at the apple. This time, Tate, now a tall, thin 16-year-old, accepted the offer. To both those who had supported Tate and many of those who had helped convict him, his release was a welcome end to a tragedy that nearly claimed a second life. In May 2005, less than a year and a half into his 10 years of parole, Lionel Tate was arrested for robbing a pizza delivery man at gunpoint. His probation was revoked and he was returned to prison to await trial on the new charges. For American Justice, I'm Bill Curtis.